All right, I'm going to do the first two pages on this video. Um, the first thing we're going to do is some factoring, and we have some examples of that in the S9A handout. And you can see there's, there's a bunch of factoring uh, examples in this handout. Okay, so when I look at this one here, uh, our goal is to find out what um, x values make this quantity equal to zero. So first thing I can do is I can say, okay, let's can factor out a 2, and then I get x squared plus 3x minus 18 equals zero if I've factored out the 2. Um, and then I think to myself, what two things multiply to give me 18 <clears throat> and subtract to give me 3? So, and I think, okay, is it 18 times 1? No. Is it uh, 2 times 9? No. Is it 3 times 6? Yes. 3 times 6 multiplies to give me 18 and subtracts to give me 3. So I'm going to write a 6 and a 3 here. Now, since this is plus 3, I'm going to have to put plus there and minus there. Okay. And so, but now I need to solve for x. So what makes this factor equal to 0? Um, when x is negative 3, or negative 6, sorry. And what makes this equal to 0? When x is positive 3, because the opposite sign, if I plug in 3 here, 3 minus 3 gives me 0. Okay, now this here is called difference of squares. There are people that had a lot of trouble with that in class today. So if you look at the this handout, the the S9A handout, there's a whole section on difference of squares, which is if I've got a squared minus b squared, that's the same thing as a minus b times a plus b. So um, if I've got x squared minus 25, that's going to be x plus 5 times x minus 5. And you can always check, right? x times x gives me x squared. x times negative 5 gives me negative 5x. 5 times x gives me plus 5x. And 5 times negative 5 is negative 25. And when I FOIL this out, you can see the negative 5x and the 5x cancel out, and we're left with x squared minus 25. So this is factoring using the difference of squares method. Okay, so I've got 16x squared minus 9, so that's going to be 4x minus 3 times 4x plus 3, and that's equal to 0. So um, I could say 4x minus 3 equals 0. 4x equals 3, x equals 3 fourths. And then if I do 4x plus 3 equals 0, then I can subtract 3 on both sides. 4x equals negative 3, and divide by 4x equals negative 3 fourths. Okay? So if I plug those values in, we would have. Um, we would have 0 on the left side of the equation. OK, next one here. Uh, this one's kind of tricky. So we need to think, OK, what things are we going to, um, what two binomials are going to multiply to give me this? So uh, to get 3, we know it's going to be um, a 3 and a 1. Now the thing we need to do is figure out what things um, multiply to get me 8x squared. So I'm going to have 8x squared. And um, then you kind of have to do some plugging and checking. So um, I'm going to do some ones that are not correct. So um, so some ones that are not correct. So let's pretend that uh, you know I put a 3 here and a 1 here. And then I let's just put an 8x and an x. 8x times x gives me 8x squared. 3 times x gives me 3x. 8x times 1 gives me 8x. And these two have to subtract to give me 2x. Is 8x minus 3x 2x? No. OK, so that one doesn't work. Um, what if I had? Um, 3, 1, 3. OK, what if I had, um, let's put a 2x 
and a 4x here, because 2x times 4x gives me 8x squared. Okay, 3 times 4 gives me 12x. 2x times 1 gives me 2x. Do these values here subtract to give me negative 2x? No. Okay, so now I'm going to do the one that is correct, and that is... Um, uh, and, and you just kind of have to guess and check until you finally get it. So it's 4x and 2x. So 4x times 2x gives me 8x squared. 3 times 2x is going to give me 6x. And 4x times 1 is going to give me 4x. And these do subtract to give me 2x. So now I have to think to myself, okay, we've got a minus 2x here. So which one's going to be negative? The bigger one. So I'm going to put a negative there, and we're going to put a negative there. Oh, I should have put a negative here, because we're supposed to get negative 3, right? Oops. Okay. So then this one here has to be positive. Positive 4x times 1 gives me 4x. And so now I've got my factors. My factors are 2x plus 1 times 4x minus 3 equals 0. Okay, so now we're using the zero product property to, to find out what x is. So I can say 2x plus 1 equals 0. So I get 2x equals negative 1. x equals negative 1 half. And then here I've got 4x minus 3 equals 0. So uh, 4x equals positive 3 x equals 3 fourths. Okay, you may want to hit pause, and you may want to go back to your um, S9A handout for more practice if you need review on that. Okay, um, on S9... Uh, E, we did some practices with completing the square and putting um, things in vertex form. So if you need help with vertex form, you should look at S9E. Okay, so uh, to put this in vertex form, uh, the first thing I do is I rewrite the equation y equals x squared minus 8x, leave some space, Okay, and what do I need to add to make this a perfect square? And what we learned when we did our completing the square handout is that you take this value, you divide it by 2 and square it. 8 divided by 2 is 4, and 4 squared is 16. So I need to add 16 on both sides of the equal sign to make this here a perfect square. And if we were to factor this out, this would be um, x minus 4 times x minus 4, which gives me x minus 4 squared. So now I have 16 plus y equals x minus 4 squared plus 7. Because what I just did is I substituted this whole term with x minus 4 squared. Okay, now we're almost done. We need to subtract 16 on both sides of the equal sign. And then I've got y equals x minus 4 squared. And then 7 minus 16 is negative 9. OK, so now that it's in vertex form, my vertex is positive 4, negative 9. And I'm going to put that point right on my graph. Okay, vertex, positive 4, negative 9. Okay, so now we want to find the y-intercept. The y-intercept is when, um, the y-intercept is when uh, x is 0. So 
If I plug 0 in for x, we have y equals 0 minus 0 plus 7. So the y-intercept is going to be here at 7. And then uh, y, uh, the axis of symmetry is x equals 4, because that's um, where uh, the the x value of the vertex. And then we're going to convert it to this form here. So I've got y equals uh, uh, y equals x squared minus 8x plus 7. So if we factor this out, what two things multiply to give me 7 and add to give me 8? It's going to be 7 and a 1. And since this is negative, they both are negative. Okay, so the x-intercepts are uh, x equals 1 and x equals 7. So I can put these values at 1 and at 7 on my graph. And we've got my y-intercept here at there. And now we can draw our graph. So it's going to look like... Okay, hit pause if you need to copy this down and look at it some more. Okay, next page. Okay, so this equation here is called uh, the intercept form, and you got these definitions uh, on intercept form on the handout that was uh, S9E.3. Uh, different ways to write a, an equation. And here they talk about the three different ways. General form, intercept form, and vertex form. Uh, general form just has it all in, in order. Intercept form helps you find the x-intercepts, and vertex form helps you find the vertex. So given that we've got the x-intercepts here, we're going to use intercept form. So y equals a x minus m times x minus n. And here, they've already written it down. Okay, let, we could use a p and q if you want. It doesn't matter. Okay, so um, so this 2 and 6 we're going to put in there. So now we're going to get y equals a times x minus 2 and x minus 6, right? And um, we need to find out what the a value is. So the a value we can get uh, from this point right here um, when x is 0, y is 3, right? So I'm going to plug in 0 in for x and 3 in for y. Right? Plugging in 0 in for x and 3 in for y, and then we get 3 equals a times negative 2 times negative 6. So you get 3 equals uh, 12 times a and then divide by 12, and a is going to be equal to 1 fourth. Okay? You may want to hit pause if you need more time. Okay, so now that I know a is 1 fourth, I'm going to rewrite this equation here, and we get y equals 1 fourth um, x minus 2 times x minus 6. And um, so we're trying to get the equation in this form. So um, let's do distributive property. y equals 1 fourth. x times x gives me x squared. x times negative 6 gives me negative 6x. Negative 2 times x gives me negative 2x. And negative 2 times negative 6 gives me positive 12. 
Okay, and now let's combine those two like terms. Okay, and then uh, we can do distributive property with that one fourth, and we get y equals one fourth x squared minus uh, 8x times 1 fourth is going to give me 2x and then 1 fourth times 12 is going to give me 3. Okay, so write the equation in this form. There we have it. Okay, write down the equation of the axis of symmetry. Now the axis of symmetry cuts this uh, parabola right down the center and uh, you could probably eyeball it and say, oh, it looks like it's 4. But if you wanted to know how I get 4, you can take the two x-intercepts, which is 2 and 6. You can add them together and divide by 2. 2 plus 6 gives me 8, and 8 divided by 2 is 4. So the axis of symmetry is x equals 4. Now, on the real IB test, if you don't write x equals, they're going to take off points or may not even give you points at all if for axis of symmetry. You has to be an equation, and to be an equation, it has to have an equal sign. Okay, let's do the next one. Write the equation of the axis of symmetry. So first of all, um, I've got negative 5 and 1. You could probably just count it and say, oh, it's it's right here down the center, right? So the equation of the axis of symmetry is x equals negative 2, right? How did I get that? You could say negative 5 plus 1, add them together and divide by 2. We get uh, negative 4 over 2, um, which gives me negative 2. All right, uh, find the values of p and q. Okay. Um, P and Q is where it crosses the x-axis, so P equals negative 5 and Q equals 1. Okay, now find the value of A. Okay, so um, we've got F of X equals A times X minus P and x minus q. I'm just rewriting it. You don't have to rewrite that. And we've got um, f of x equals a times x plus 5 times x minus 1. All right. Now um, we've got this coordinate here. When x is 0, y is negative 10, so I'm going to put in um, those values. So y is negative 10 when x is 0. All right, y is negative 10 when x is 0. Okay, so let's simplify this. We have negative 10 equals a times 5 times negative 1. So if I have negative 10 equals a negative 5a, then we divide both sides by a negative 5, and a equals 2. Okay, the next part will be on a separate video.